Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 6, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier found a number of Base64 encoded malware samples on Pastebin. Typically, these type of posts are then downloaded to infected systems. Pastebin as a source is usually not considered malicious and the Base64 encoded samples are unlikely to trigger anti-malware signatures, making that a sort of a very overt, covert channel. Uh, this is in particular problematic if the download that initiates uh, the infection and decodes uh, the malware is not detected by anti-malware. We had this happen before where sort of simple JavaScript downloaders and such were not detected. So uh, this uh, could then be made worse by downloading from a well-known and semi-trusted site like a uh, Pastebin. Xavier couldn't identify any specific malware sample associated with the Pastebin post that he found, uh, but there are likely many samples using this technique and not all Pastebin posts like these are actively used at any time. Cisco's Meraki product line of wireless access points suffer from an interesting problem. A clock component inside these access points will fail, causing the access point to crash and become unbootable again. This is a hardware problem. This is not something you can fix with a software update. Cisco initiated a recall and it is important that you get in line to have your device replaced uh, before it is affected by this bug because in that moment it will just die. According to Cisco, replacements will be prioritized to replace older units first, which of course will hit this particular bug first. And Intel released a hotfix for the McAfee ePolicy Orchestrator. The hotfix patches a blind SQL injection vulnerability to exploit the vulnerability. An attacker would send a crafted HTTP request to the ePolicy Orchestrator and the attacker would then be able to retrieve information from the database or the attacker would be able to impersonate an agent without actually having to authenticate. As far as I know, there's no active exploit for this vulnerability out there, but again, SQL injection is typically not that terribly hard to exploit. And given that this is a security product that's supposed to protect the rest of your infrastructure, I would expedite this hotfix. And we got a quick update on the SMB3 denial of service survey. According to an article posted by ThreadPost, Microsoft is not planning an emergency patch for this vulnerability. Instead, we should see a patch in a future patch Tuesday. They didn't say how soon this will happen. Now, next week, so about eight days from today, we'll have a patch Tuesday. Maybe we'll see an update then. And just to to clarify because there were a lot of questions about this. This is pretty easy to exploit. All an attacker has to do is host an HTML page with a malicious image tag that then points to a malicious SMB share. There were a lot of posts out there that claimed that this is not possible, this kind of cross uh, protocol linking, it works. I tried it out. It does not work with an iframe tag. It also doesn't work with sort of an A and then an href uh, tag where someone has to click on a link. Uh, the image tag is the key here because the image tag is of the same trust domain as the rest of the HTML page. That's where these SMB SMB resources work. If you tested it with an iframe tag and it didn't work, well, iframes are sort of uh, cordoned off or sandboxed off. So that's uh, why it doesn't work uh, with the iframe, but only with the image tag as far as I've seen so far. You can try a font tag or something like this uh, too, but then image, uh, that's sort of what worked for me. And the Indian military is warning its soldiers of malware that is spreading via WhatsApp. The article on indiatimes.com isn't 100% clear, but it appears that the malware arrives disguised as an Excel or a PDF document and then is used to install additional malicious files that leak personal information from 
affected mobile devices. This looks like WhatsApp is used just like any other means to get the user to open a malicious document or proceed to a malicious link. Indian security force believe the attacks are targeted. It isn't clear if the source of the message is another hacked WhatsApp account or if there are any tricks or so the sender is using to make the victim open the file or click on the link. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.